Welcome back to This Week. Time now to get the views of our media and political experts, MMA Creative Vice President and Democratic Operative Mike Kopp, and her daily on 1510 WLAC syndicated talk show host, Steve Gill. Welcome, gentlemen. Nice to see you. You heard Tom talk a little bit about the debate going on over the debt ceiling and not showing enough leadership on either side, especially the president. I think the Democrats even may agree with that early on, but now he has taken the reins. He is showing leadership. Is it enough? Is it the right kind of leadership? Well, I think at this point, what's happened in the last few days is we've seen the Repub we've seen the, the Democratic president stay at the negotiating table. We've seen the Republican leadership in the House go back and forth, you know, abandoning the negotiating table. And then we had the Senate leadership this week come in and say, you know what, maybe we should get out of this altogether and just advocate our responsibility to the president. All that is completely irresponsible. The president is at the negotiating table trying to work through a compromise. The Republicans are the ones that can't seem to decide if they want to stay at the negotiating table or leave. Well, I'm not sure that it's Republicans that, that stormed out of the room, which is what President uh, Obama did. There's no reason to sit at a negotiating table when the other guy leaves. And more importantly, the president has never put a plan on the table. The Democrats have controlled the Senate during the last two years and have never put a budget on the table. This president has given speeches and had ne has never put a specific plan on the table. Put up a plan. If you want to talk about negotiations, put up your version of what taxes you want to increase, and then let's have a debate about that. The president gives speeches and holds press conferences. That's not leadership. Is it fair to say the Republicans are divided in regards to exactly what they want to come out of this. I don't think there's any division. We will cut spending. We will not raise taxes. If the American people feel undertaxed, they need to be calling the White House and saying, raise our taxes. That's not what the polls are showing. It's certainly not what the election showed just uh, six months but ago. But some are saying they are willing to look at closing loopholes, which others are claiming that's a tax increase. But people are always willing to close loopholes on others. You've got 50 percent of the country that pays no federal income tax at all, and yet you've got the president and the Democrats saying, let's raise taxes on those who are paying and paying in multiples of what they earn as the share of the income in this country. If we really want to have a fair shared sacrifice, let's go to a national sales tax, let's go to a fair tax, and have everybody pay something so that half in this country aren't getting a free like ride. divided? Absolutely. Back to your point. I mean, we have Senate Republicans that are criticizing Eric Cantor, who's the, who's the House leader that's at the table, the negotiating table, saying he's going too far, he's, he's too much of a hothead. There is division in the Republican Party, and that's why we can't seem to get a compromise worked out. Is there going to be agreement, even if it's behind closed doors, something has to be done before August 2nd, some kind of agreement on both parts. Something has to be done by August 2nd because President Obama has an August 3rd fundraiser where he's going to be charging $35,000 a plate to have dinner with him while he's trying to talk about the average American. The bottom line is they're going to cut spending, they're going to hold the line on taxes, and they'll move this battle ahead to fight another day. But the problem is that this battle should have been being waged over the last six months, 18 months, when we've seen this administration bury us in another four trillion in debt, and now they're acting like they're suddenly going to be interested in this issue. This debt problem didn't occur overnight, and we need to start cutting spending in some small portion to begin to get the battle The president waged. did give some, he is saying, that cuts to Social Security, Medicaid are on the table, looking at reductions there. The president has said from day one, everything is on the table. The Republicans have said not everything is on the table. You can't work through a compromise until everything is on the table. You can't even come up with a plan unless both parties are willing to put everything on the table. I think they are going to come to a compromise. I think Tom Ingram's right. The American people will not stand for another economic crisis. The president has not put any plan on the table. He is hinting at, well, I might think about this. I might think about cuts down the road, but I want income taxes and tax increases immediately. You can't believe that the tax cuts are ever going to show and that the cuts are going to show, but the tax increases are going to be immediate. So, yeah, you can put a plan on the, on the table. You had the Ryan plan that was put on the table, very specific. The Democrats didn't put up a counter plan. The president didn't put up a counter plan. Put up a plan, then we'll debate the differences in the party. But even some of the Republican Party said the Ryan Ryan plan actually increased the debt more over the over the time period, and some were kind of backing off of the specifics of that. Only plan. because the spending continues to right. increase, it doesn't reduce the the debt; it reduces the deficit. And if we would just go back to where we were in 2008, where we were having those bad deficits under President Bush of 300 to 400 billion a year, under the Democrats they're now 1.5 trillion a year. Knock a trillion off by going back to where we were in 2008, fire 200,000 federal workers that Barack Obama has added to the payroll, then we've got a debt we can deal with. The early, the early Republican plans, like the Ryan plan, protected billionaires and millionaires and corporate America. What the White House did early on with that plan is say, fine, let's open it up and put everything on the table. And that's when the Republicans walked away. Talk locally about the, the irony, as you were, of Williamson County, the most Republican county in the state, voting to increase property taxes to help pay for improvements in education because federal money is being cut away. There has to be irony there. Maybe it's needed. 
But again, this is the argument going on in Washington. Although it's a different argument, I, I will say, it's a local because argument. it is local. And the problem in the local arena is not the same that you have in Washington. You don't have the billions and billions of dollars being wasted. People will see waste in the local government. They will highlight it. They will deal with it. If the people in Williamson County think they need to spend more on schools, need to spend more in the local community, they're going to have a better watchdog eye on their local government. I still think these folks who voted for a tax increase <laughs> in a recession are going to pay a price, and rightly <laughs> so. But if you're going to raise taxes, do it locally, not at the national level. I was going to say, even you're going to have to admit the folks in Williamson County are probably not going to be real pleased by this, even if it were deemed to be necessary. Oh, and, and I think they ought to be going after these folks' heads, and they ought to be confronting them at Publix and at the Harris Teeters and at the Kroger's, <laughs> and I think you're going to find that happening. And the country clubs, don't forget about that, too. But don't you see the irony there? I mean, oh, absolutely. And the, and, and the fact is that, uh, you know, th this is the same, and he says it's a local issue, but when it comes to either, either putting money, tax dollars toward things that are important, whether it's education or local services, whether it's Medicare or Social Security, these are all important issues. Federal, local, they're all the same. Uh, and when the Republicans say locally, oh, we're going to talk about tax increases, but you can't talk about those kind of things on the national level. But at the local level, they ought to be looking at cuts as well. You could sell the Williamson County Hospital, and in selling that hospital for what it's worth, you could completely eradicate all the debt in Williamson County, free up about 20 to $30 million a year in money that's being paid in interest that could fund a new school or two schools per year. It's how you spend your money, and unfortunately, politicians don't make those hard choices until they're forced to by coming up against spending cuts. I think you're going to have 17 challengers to these 17 incumbent county commissioners who voted for this. I think you may be right about that. <laughs> Steve Gill and Mike Cop, appreciate very much your time and your insight. You stay with us. This week continues in a moment.